I have to cry. All right, so when she found out, or when she found it was hard to express herself because of struggles with dyslexia, Janya McCoy turned to fashion to give herself a voice. She's a wardrobe stylist and TV fashion expert featured on City Line in Toronto. She zooms in now to share her story. Janya, what a uniquely beautiful name. Good morning and welcome to Smile Jamaica. Good morning, how are you guys? I am very how well, are how are you this morning? Um, I'm good, cold. Yes, <laughs> I was just gonna ask you, what, what's today like in terms of temperature? Um, it's not actually too bad, um, because I believe you guys do Fahrenheit or Celsius, I'm not sure. Is it Fahrenheit? In we do, or? we do Celsius, right? Yes. Celsius, okay, so we do Celsius as well. So it's about two degrees. <laughs> Did you just preface that by saying it's not too bad? It's two degrees, it's pretty cold. Okay. Pretty cold. Yeah, I would think that's pretty, <laughs> we're sending some warmth, Jamaican sunshine your way. Um, Daniel, let's yes. start by establishing your link with Jamaica. Well, my parents are actually Jamaican. Um, my dad was born in St. Mary, uh, Rakavessa, and my mom was um, born in England, but raised in Kingston, Jamaica. So yeah, and I actually have a brother and two sisters that live in Jamaica and in St. Mary as well. Gotcha, gotcha. So do you visit? You've been here? Oh, All... yes. Okay, good, <laughs> yes. good. So you're plugged yes. in. But you were born, oh, yes. born in yes. Canada. Um, you're now working as a TV fashion expert and a learning differences advocate, which I find to be very interesting um, because of your own struggles with dyslexia. Um, yeah. Tell me a little bit about how that played in your life because, you know, even into your corporate life, you were struggling with this. Yes, yes. So, a um, little backstory. I found out that I was dyslexic at 23 which is pretty old <laughs> to find out that you have a learning difference. I call, it's a learning disability, but I call it a difference yeah. because there's such a negative connotation when it comes on to somebody that has a disability, or I call it a learning advantage, meaning I can, I basically have certain advantages that I can do. So um, yeah, before my diagnosis, I <laughs> struggled tremendously with learning. Um, I didn't really know how to, I didn't really know left and right until I was maybe about 15, 16 years old. I had difficulties tying my shoelaces. Mm -hmm. um, I failed college about four times before finding out that I was dyslexic. I barely passed high school. And um, my mom was one of my biggest advocates. She went to every um, parent meeting, spoke to guidance counselors and they told her that there's nothing wrong with me and i will never forget when i was in high school and um this is the time where i was trying to like figure out what my next step is because i was in grade 11 and i was just about to graduate to go to grade 12 and the guidance counselor told me that there is no hope for me mm -hmm. that i would never get into college either. the guidance counselor told you that the guidance, that guidance counselor. counselor is in the wrong work oh trust me <laughs> I mean, she told me there was no hope and um, I would never get into college and university and I should just figure out that um, I should just go find something to go do and go work. That's what she told me. Wow. And um, long story short, like I said, I failed college four times. I took so many different courses and then um, one school um, named George Brown College in Toronto they are the ones that I went to and I took fashion management there and uh, spoke to a guidance counselor and said, you know what, I want to know what's happening. And they tested me and found out that I have dyslexia. Wow. So Must have been from such, there, a, such an inflection point in your life to actually put uh, a name to what you were experiencing. Um, exactly. but you, yeah, but you, but you went on. Um, to do fashion, you were nominated for valedictorian for your work, yes. fashion work at George Brown College. You went to 106 and Park and then yes. back to Canada, where you currently are doing what, please? <laughs> well, right now I work in the film and television world. So I work on movies, um, big time movies in um, Toronto because um, a lot of, because um, we have a lot of infrastructure in Toronto where you can do these big budget movies and a lot of space. So I've worked on so many stuff for Amazon, Netflix. I'm also a visual display artist as you can see there, mm -hmm. um, where I style mannequins. 
Mm -hmm. And um, right now, um, I'm actually a fashion expert on a popular Canadian TV show, a morning TV show um, called City Line, which I do with Tracy Moore, who's also Jamaican as well. Hey, love to hear that. So you say yeah. fashion, fashion saved your life, Janielle? Yes. Yes, it did. Um, fashion was a way for me to express myself when I couldn't do so verbally. Like, if you told me that I would be here talking to you <laughs> and thousands of others, um, you told me this years ago when I was like, in, like a teenager or even in my early 20s, I would have literally laughed and said, wow. no way. <laughs> wow, which is, which is um, kind of where I want you to go because there may be young people who are watching this who do haven't been able to put a name on what they're experiencing. So I hear you talking about issues with tying your shoelaces, not knowing left from right. There are yes. many young people who are experiencing dyslexia and they don't know. So one, yeah. what are parents to be looking for? And two, what are you saying to those young people about the fact that it, it, it can't stop them from stepping into their greatness? Well, I would say to the parents, I mean, for me, <laughs> numbers, were a huge thing. Like my mom bought me this huge times table when I was um, in elementary school and I would go over it every day. And then the next day I couldn't remember it and she didn't understand why. So little things like that, even with memory, or if you see your child reading a book and then all of a sudden they start to stumble which I did that, like I would be reading and then all of a sudden the words would be blurry. Mm -hmm. But I didn't really know how to tell my parents that. I was just like, what's happening? And they thought I needed glasses. <laughs> well, it's actually my brain trying to like decode it's, all this information. Right, right, right. So um, for me, I would just tell students, like kids and um, also parents that, you know, it's gonna be okay. Like it's gonna be a long road. <laughs> It, but it definitely will be okay. And find your strengths and really focus on your strengths instead of so, so much focusing on the weakness. Mm -hmm. Because I found yes. if you focus so much on the things you can't do, then you feel like a failure. Right. But I knew that fashion was my way to express myself. Fantastic. And I really pushed myself in the fashion industry. And as we go, because I'm getting the wrap up, a word to the folks who are whose responsibility it is to, to encourage our young people. Like that guidance, where is that guidance counselor now? You should find her. I've seen her a few times actually. Have you? She knows what I do, so. Okay, all right. <laughs> Success is the best revenge. Um, a word to those folks though, Janelle, who in one sentence can destroy a young person's confidence, you know, when they're, when they're really employed to do the opposite. Yes, yes. Wow. Yeah, it's, um, you said it was, what did you say? I'm sorry. Um, I'm asking you to what's give the one phrase. No, a word. You. I'm asking you to give a word to those folks who can make oh. or break a young person with just <laughs> one word. Yeah. Um, just try to be positive. I think positivity is the best way. And I also tell a lot of people, even my clients, that it all depends on how you speak to somebody. Oh, like, I that guidance counselor that told me that I wouldn't pretty much um, um, couldn't come out to anything was it's something that's always stuck in my head. And I mean, I've had other guiding counselors before to tell me certain things about my learning and so on, but they did it in such a positive way. Mm -hmm. So positive reinforcement is truly important. Mm -hmm. Forget Very the scary. negative. Yeah. Thank you so much for stopping in and sharing this story um, this morning. Very important example for a lot of folks watching not to stop. Focus on your strengths instead of what you think may be your weakness. And the sky is the limit as Janiel is living her dream uh, right now. Thank you so much. We hope you get to come and visit soon because two degrees is not it. <laughs> I'll be there next week. So. <laughs> Look at that. All right. Wardrobe stylist and TV fashion expert, Janielle McCoy. Thanks, Janielle. All the best to you. After the break, we're taking a look at a few black socks.